Howdy friends, Steve DePoe here for the Rose Realty Team with this week's Real Estate Live for North Texas. Today's topic, 2.5 trends that are going on in real estate right now. Let's talk about them. First of all, inventory crunch. Hey, we've told you, I think the last, or I've told you the last two or three weeks uh, that we have an inventory crunch or an inventory shortage in North Texas. Uh, that's actually been going on for a number of years now, even before the pandemic hit. Um, and so that that crunch continues to go on. Um, sellers, um, sell, sellers were down in, tw in 2020, along with new home construction. Uh, new home construction was down f because of the inability to get to get laborers and because of a supply supply chain shortage, uh, because people weren't able to produce the wood, the nails, the plaster, the pipes, those type of things, because because in industries were shut down. And so there was a new home construction shortage or, or, or housing was delayed and sellers didn't realize the strength of the real estate economy uh, during the pandemic. So they decided, you know, not to sell their home. They decided to, decided to stay put. In addition, let's be honest, um, many people didn't know whether they were going to have a job from month to month or whether they're going to be furloughed or laid off. So they decided to play it safe. Understandable, right? And so they decided to play it safe. And they didn't they didn't list or didn't sell their home in order to move up or move down or upsize or downsize or invest right so right now um sellers are realizing the strength of the real estate market and real estate listings and sales are starting to increase even even now with at this, this point of the year uh, builders right now also have never been as optimistic about the future as they are right now um, or at least, at least as optimistic about the year as they are right now. So our builders are starting to ramp up production. We're going to have new, more new housing starts and sales this year than we did last year. Not going to quite hit 2019 levels, but we're going to have more new housing starts um, and sales this year than we did the previous year. Um, suburbs growth. So what, so what basically, one of the things that happened, one of the things we predicted, first of all, millennials like to move to the suburbs and like to have that kind of openness and feel um, compared, to, compared to their parents who didn't mind, you know, city life, right? Okay, so, so, so millennials are moving, deciding to move out to the suburbs uh, for that space, for the control of their environment. Um, also, there's lower, lower, lower uh, costs when you move to the suburbs compared to the cities. In addition, uh, because they are now able to work from home more often, uh, depending on what you do for a living, um, your friend like customer support or say online sales or those kinds of things, um, you can live almost any place. And so the suburb, you don't have to live in the city, you know, four blocks from your, from your place of business, you can live in the suburbs and you can work remotely. And so that's driving people out to the, out, out to the suburbs not as quickly as everybody had anticipated. We had anticipated about midpoint last year for the beat of this mass exodus, this mass sucking sound from the cities where people were, were running out and leaving. It wasn't quite like that, but what it was is people were, are, were and are starting, or uh, continuing rather to move out to the suburbs compared to the way they, to, to, compared to the way they lived in the housing that they had before. This, they all started to move to the suburbs and so the suburbs are growing. Take a look at any of the areas around, um, around the, Fort Worth, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Um, you see housing starts, new, new developments popping up in places, you know, you could, you could drive, down a, drive down a street and go down a month later and suddenly bam, there's, you know, housing starts. And so, and so housing starts are just popping up every place north and west of the, of the Metroplex. Assistance boost affordab uh, uh, affordability. There are a lot of programs out there for, for first time home buyers, for, for military vets, for first responders, for healthcare professionals, for teachers. There are a, are a lot of programs out there that you all just don't even know about. So go and get, get yourself in contact with a, um, a good mortgage person or a good lender. If you, don't, if you don't have one, let us know. We'll put you in contact with somebody. Um, but there are a lot of programs out there to help with down payment assistance, with um, uh, interest uh, assistance, it, um, et cetera, uh, that make housing more affordable. Now, 
the affordability index is actually starting to decline a bit because of the housing crunch we were in last year, the shortage we were in last year. And what happened was if you had a good house that you put on the market, you had multiple offers on it, right? And that then drove up the price. So a house that was truly worth, you know, $300,000 was selling for 325 because there were multiple offers on it or people were just throwing money at houses, which is great, you know, which is, which is great. But that drives the, um, the affordability index down. So especially first time home buyers, they have a, whole, a hard time, uh, they have a hard time finding, um, finding uh, the, that first home. And depending on, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're, if you're, you know, if, if you're a first responder, military vet, uh, teacher, um, chances are your, your, your salary is gonna be, you know, you're gonna get a little cost of living, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna be 10%, right? And so the, 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 the increase in your salary is not gonna be able to increase, uh, 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 not gonna be able to go hand in hand with the increase in housing costs. And so you're gonna be kind of left behind a little bit. Look for these, look for these, um, look for these um, uh, affordability and uh, programs that a lot of banks and mortgage companies have and the state of Texas has in order to help you, um, help you afford those homes. Next week, 5.5 things to consider before relocation. Something that we had to consider 25 years ago. Um, and some of those we took into account and some of those we didn't. So 5.5 thing, 5 .5 things to consider before relocation. This is Steve DePoe with the Rose Realty team. I'm going to bounce.